Hello, I'm Ray Zong, 134 here. And as always, I am Average Joe Squad. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Hyphen, the show where we look at comic books, movies, and everything in between. And it's spider man again, but before we do that, so if you remember the last episode we shot, uh, I gave Colton his Christmas present, and uh, his for me finally arrived, so we're going to do that right after. I regret that I couldn't get you a Spider-Man bag. I looked... <laughs> The bi I, one I found was like a fucking suitcase, and I'm like, I ain't paying that much yeah. for one gift. Well, that, it's, it's, it's gonna look ridiculous. <laughs> well, that like I, I didn't I didn't put yours in a bag. I just had it in a Walmart shop. <laughs> I just didn't want to leave it in the Amazon bag. Oh wow! It's a Japanese Spider-Man shirt. Oh thanks, dude. Yeah, no problem. Oh man. Oh, that looks really good. It's really because I can't find my one that I bought. But no, that looks really nice. I like the I like the spider. I tried finding the one with Leo Pardon on it, but I don't think they make them. No, uh, yeah. Like, I'm just happy to see Japanese Spider-Man. Trust like, me, I looked. Like I, because like, especially because now now thanks to the the documentary, like I I'm glad he's getting a little bit more notoriety. Yeah. Because like, for those of you who don't know, like up until like the Spider Verse comic, they didn't really do anything with the knowledge of Leah Parton. Like, I think the most that Marvel references him was, like, the, the Spider-Man TAS where they talk about how the one Spider-Man during the Spider Wars thing has a giant robot. <laughs> Which I'm like, I guess that's a reference, but, but no, thank you, dude. That was yeah, really thoughtful. No problem. Like, like I said, I looked around for a, a good one, so yeah. I hope that one was, was no, good. No, that so. looks good. But, uh, now on to... But probably a lot of you will argue is shit. I, I personally don't. In my opinion, uh, for Spidey Miss, this story we're going to review, I, it, I think it's there's a good story here. There's some bloat. It, it, there's a lot well, of Well, it's funny because I read this whole thing today, like yeah. two and a half hours. I read the whole thing. Which, it, I remember you being like, damn, I, I give me credit for that. Because <laughs> well, like, like, when I first read this, it took me a little bit. And mostly because I think, A, it was the art. Like, it, it's, a, it's fine for the most part. Like, there's some parts where I'm like, yeah, but... Like, it's, it's just so long, and, and, and probably a lot of people will be like, well, this has the same problem that, like, the Spider-Verse comic has that we argue about, like, how a lot of it is, like, the same thing happening over and over again. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't think it's nearly as bad as Spider-Verse, at least I don't think so. But I don't, I don't either, I actually enjoy no. this a lot. I, before, we, before we dive in, I want to share my thoughts written down, because I, I remember you, yeah. you came in on me, I actually... Wrote my thoughts yeah, down. Yeah, you wrote your thoughts down. I texted him, and I was like getting out of the shower, and I'm like, text Adam, I have thoughts. No. <laughs> and you know, which I imagine you were like, oh, Christ. I'm like, here we go. Yeah, which you guys can't see. I have a whole page written. Yep. This is college rule notebook, yep. and I write really fucking small. Yeah. So, uh, but this is, this is just kind of some of the ideas I put down. So. Well. Uh, real quick, just to get, before we go in here, we should probably at least talk about the Let's cover. Let's talk about the cover of this, because this shit is yeah. awesome. Like, I don't like, care what anybody says, like, and for those who don't know, this is the same cover from the Maximum Carnage video game. Yeah. Which I have both the NES and the Genesis version. Yep, both. The Gen yeah, my Genesis actually has the manual and yeah. the art and everything. Which, which uh, let's, this let's, thing let's, looks awesome. Yeah, no, I, I love this picture. Like, like, I love the fact that they have, like, a regular picture of New York, and then they just have this carnage over it. Like, I remember seeing that as a kid and being like, damn, that looks, yeah, that looks no, awesome. Like, this looks really cool, and uh, to be fair, this came out before the video game. Uh, the video game was just something they made. Like, I don't even think that was supposed to be, like, a tie into this. It just happened. This is actually more of a sequel to the first Carnage story where Venom Venom came back mm -hmm. after Spider-Man left him on that island. Um, to make a long story short, basically this story is about Carnage coming back and r rampaging through New York with a team of supervillains and Spider-Man and Venom uh, and a gaggle of other superheroes they, they get uh, as things go on trying to prevent the chaos that Carnage is, like, re uh, reigning, so... Yeah, and me and him actually have the same edition, too. This is yeah. the same is it, yeah. version we have. I don't think they've reissued it with a different cover. No. Uh, to be fair, like, why would you? Like, it, I mean, I know, they have, a, I know they have perfect. a Carnage omnibus out that has this and a couple other stories in it, but it yeah. has a totally different cover. But, uh... I'll just go ahead and read mine. Um, Y'all probably... I'll bring this up later, but there's a comparison to be made here with another thing we've reviewed. Yeah. Um, which I'll get to in a minute, which I, I don't know if you've thought about this or not. So yeah, okay. uh, I'll just go ahead. Um, Maximum Carnage represents the darker side of humanity as was evident in the intent by the writers at Marvel, which going by the, the foreword, they talk about that. Yeah. Talk about maybe, maybe going a little too strong too early, though. 
which I, I can, I think there's an argument there. Yeah, there is a bit of an argument there. Um, by purposely showing a villain that has the opposite of the responsibility that Peter carries in his entire being, it directly pits Spidey against the demons that his father seeks to warn him about during the saga at one point. Not only does Carnage gather other villains to his side that further his belief that the, the only absolute is Carnage in the world, hence his name, he also manages to push Spidey and those gathered with him to the brink of giving up the values of not taking lives. This trifecta also manages to nearly engulf all of New York into the chaos with, with via Shriek's powers. Despite these challenges, the heroes ultimately prevail as it is the light that prevails over darkness. The appearance of other heroes in the story goes hand in hand with this, Cloak and Dagger playing a central part of the story, once again showing the light and dark themes through Dagger's supposed death at the hands of Shriek, which throws, which throws Cloak into, I, I, I don't know what you would call it, like a like depression, a, like, like a depression, like a mourning kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, like, basically he spends the whole time in the church, like the like third season of uh, the Spawn animated series. Yeah. <clears throat> Even the two's outward appearances show a light and dark contrast, yin and yang. Venom, while not being completely on the side of good, plays as a great of Peter's conscience, wanting to destroy Carnage for the supposed good, while also proclaiming to be haunted by being the creator of Carnage and therefore placing some of the responsibility on his shoulders. Yeah. Black Cat also plays with this role, initially agreeing with Venom on how to stop Carnage, although she eventually joins Peter in knowing that this isn't, this isn't the way, by retreating after being injured in a battle against Carnage and his counterparts. She directly mentions in the story not, not knowing if she can die for her ideals in comparison to how Peter feels he can. The appearance of Captain America also helps to reaffirm sticking to one's ideals as he, had, as he has done for so long. He directly mentions this to Peter when Carnage is thought to be dead, that he stuck to his values. Mm -hmm. Overall, Mark, Maximum Carnage is a great example of how to do a light versus dark story, even with the bloat that plagues the story in many different parts. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. Um... The comparison I have is, do you feel... The thing, this is the comparison I thought when I when I got done reading. I was kind of gathering my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Superman versus the Elite. Yeah, no, I can see that. You see, like where I'm coming from with that. Yeah, like, I feel like there's a similarity. I think so, but I think I think Superman versus the Elite does it a little bit stronger, just because like it, it's so much the, the, it's so much more at the forefront of the story, with Superman basically being like. Yes, I know that there are bad people in this world, but, like, that doesn't mean you give up on being a good person just because someone is someone gets results, but, like, they do it in a horrifying way. Yeah. Like, I, I think I do get... I, I, I do see that there. I think a lot of the problem is... In that story, they vilify the elite. The only problem is this was made in the 90s. So they're like, oh, look at how badass Venom is and how cool Carnage is. Fuck Spider-Man with his with his ideals of peace and love, and he should have just killed Carnage. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not I'm not saying that like J. I think Jam Demattis is who wrote this. Uh, Jam Demattis, Tom DeFalco, Terry, Terry Cravenaugh, and David Mc McLean. Yeah, I, like I don't think that was ever their intent, but I I'm sure the the marketing team at the time who was running Marvel was like, nah. No nah, man, I'm with Tom. Tom yeah. was probably like, "Wait a minute." Yeah, Tom. Tom was like, "What? No!" Like they're 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 serial killers, and like, no nah, man, you wanted to be radical and cool. <clears throat> Sorry. Can you throw in a half issue or an issue zero? Like, as as someone who grew up through the '90s, like, but I, I do I do I never really thought about that, but that is a really good comparison. Like that, this this is a lot in a lot of ways. Spider-Man kind of dealing with is is his ideals relevant? Yeah. Um, and I, 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 you, really, you really think about it too. Like not to interrupt, but um, a lot of throughout a lot of the story, it's everybody telling him basically like no, yeah. like like you, like there's no just, other. You gotta option. kill him. Yeah. Like Black Cat tells him that Venom does it. Yeah. Like his dad tells him it. Um, his dad. Actually, we should probably explain that a little bit. Just because, yeah, these like, aren't his parents. These are the robot yeah. copies that um, come up. Doesn't that come up during Craven's Last Hunt? Like, mm -hmm. right around there. Um, I think it actually comes up around... Shortly before uh, Harry kill, kill, um, dies. Uh, basically, there was a storyline, like, back in the 70s, where Peter found out that his parents died because they were agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. What actually happened... Or to Peter at this point in the story, uh, they were being held in a Soviet prison via the yeah. end of the day. And basically, around this time, the Berlin Wall collapsed, and they let the prisoners go. And Mary and Richard Parker seemed to come back into Peter's lives, which, as you explained, they're not. They're actually robot duplicates. 
But that's another story for another time because I actually think we will probably talk about that story at some point because... Oh, yeah, definitely. Especially because we'll probably talk about why I don't really care for Peter's parents and I, I think that, like... I kind of prefer, like, the ultimate version of, of his parents or, or, like, any other version of, like... I just, don't, I just parents. don't give a shit about his parents because the Tasman movies ruined that for me. Well, that too, but, like... but Well, that, that, them and, like, with them bringing the parents, like, forward with the robot parents, I'm like... Who really gives a shit? <laughs> that sort of thing. And then later on, they did stuff where, like, oh, it turns out, like, they actually, like, they actually had a second child, or like, Richard cheated on Mary, and like, Peter has a half sister. Which I have that omnibus somewhere. I, I haven't even bothered we, to read we it. We bought like, that. Wasn't that the one I bought it always? Yeah, I think it was the um, Spider-Man: The Matter of Family. I think is what it's called. Oh, like family business. Or family business like and bullshit. But anyway, um, <clears throat> this actually also. Uh, further cement that like Cletus is the only person that can have this, the the card symbiote because he fully bonded with it. Um, later on, I think during the Clone Saga, Eddie for, uh, perma bonds with the symbiote, except that he kind of doesn't. Like it, it's weird with Venom. Retcons. Well, less retcons and more like we don't know what we're doing. It, yeah, because later on, uh, Carnage would get ripped out of out of uh, Cassidy via the Silver Surfer. Which I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, which I think led into uh, Ben getting the Carnage symbiote, turning him into Spider Carnage. Which I fucking love that design for Spider yeah, Carnage. That, that design's just as terrifying as I already yeah, no, more so because like it, it, like it, it's taking control of the hero and is using him as like a puppet. <laughs> um, but like, but yeah, I, 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 there's a lot to unpack with this story. So. If you want, you can maybe we could maybe talk about the positives with this story first, yeah, and then let's go we'll, ahead and do that. we'll talk about the, the issues we had. Um, I really like the um, the introduction of Shriek. Um, I think she's actually a really interesting character. I kind of wish she could be more of a solo character with, within the Spider-Man mythos. Yeah, like I I was actually pleasantly surprised by Shriek in this because I had ne I had never really read this prior to yeah. today. I had seen bits and pieces of oh excuse me. I'd seen bits and pieces of it here and there, just like through Google or like through YouTube talking about it. And I kind of had like a basic idea of what went on. Yeah. And then it's like when they introduced Shriek at first, I was like, oh, great, here we go. You know, this is going to be like a tacked on character, you know. But then like I was actually pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed her. I feel like she had yeah. a pretty compelling story. Well, then I really like the whole their Bonnie and Clyde sort of thing. I yeah. think I think is what really sells why I like them so much. And like... <laughs> I love how much she, like, really fits with Carnage's motif. Especially because she's, like, a metalhead. Yeah. And Carnage himself is a metalhead. Because he, like, I think, I think they even state, like, one of his favorite bands is, like, Black Sabbath. Which is why they, in they, the video they, game, they, they made the Mob Rules its theme song. Yeah, basically. the Mob Rules cover. <laughs> For those who don't know what we're talking about, um, the video game Maximum Carnage has a song in it called Carnage Rules, yep, which is the main um, theme. It's actually a cover of a song called Mob Rules by Black Sabbath, yeah, where it, they had um, uh, Ronnie James Dio as their yeah. singer, from the album Mob Rules. Yeah, um, the, the version in the game is actually done by a band called Green Je well, they're now called Green Jelly. Originally they were called Green Jello, but like, Jello obviously had issue with that because, what are you doing? So they changed the name to Green Jelly. Moving on to Which I'm like Jello. <laughs> Jello, really? Really? Like, I, which I mean, to be fair, g given Jello's track record with uh, with celebrities, that was probably the least horrible thing that ever happened to them. Yeah, probably. Probably. Um, but I, I like I said, I really like the way like their dynamic. I even like the fact that she like attaches herself to the spider doppelganger. Like almost like it's her baby or like a like a pet dog, <laughs> like I like I just love that. Like it gets a little weird when they bring in Demo Goblin and Carrion, but like I actually don't mind the fact that she kind of like forms an attachment to the doppelganger. Yeah, like I, the doppelganger is just a do like an animal more or less. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, um, during it's Secret from, Wars yeah, it's from two, Secret Wars, isn't it? it's I think it's Secret Wars two, or maybe. Th there's like seven secret wars. And there's just secret war. And then there's just secret Plural. war. Then there's a version of secret wars where it's literally Nick Fury waged a private war in Latveria with superheroes against Doctor Doom. Which I actually heard is kind of good, but... Basically, the Beyonder decided to make evil duplicates of all the different heroes. Uh, I think the only two that survived was Daredevil's doppelganger, 
which was a Rastafarian, like, goat demon. Yeah. I'd have to read the story. And uh, the, spi well, uh, the spider doppelganger. Well, I, I barely know anything about the daredevil doppelganger. I only know that because that's... It comes from the same story where he got his, like, uh, 90s costume. But the spider doppelganger was one of the ones that, like, stuck around because Spider-Man. Because um, basically, I think at the end of the story, it appeared like it died... But then, like, later, like, as the story showed, it survived. I think it actually, I can't remember, does, does the doppelganger die in this? I can't remember if it died or not. I don't think so. No, it didn't. Let me, let me, let me. I don't think it did. see if I can find it. I don't think it did. Um, but basically, uh, where's I going with this? Oh, um, like, I, I, I like their dynamic. Like I said, I think it gets a little over... It gets a little zany when they bring in Carrion and, Do and, Ho and Demo Goblin, but um, at least when they bring it with, with, the, de with the doppelganger, it, it's at least an interesting story thing to do with it. And can kind of make it seem like, oh, look, look Spider-Man's actually working with, uh, with Carnage. Yeah, no. It, oh, yeah, yeah. Carnage kills it. Yeah, yeah Carnage, yeah, like, Carnage slashes it. it up and throws it off a building. Which, I mean, that's fair. Like, I, it was kind of ridiculous they left him around anyways, because, like... Well, was, well, surprise, you're not. Sigh. It's such a tragedy, a father losing his favorite son. I had such high hopes for him. Oh, As Jesus he, Christ, yeah. Carnage. Because well, Carnage is just a goofball. Like, yeah, But, like, I, I think this here kind of actually gives Carnage more of a character than, like, the first story. Because, like, in the first story, he's literally just Joker, but in, like, like covered in red jelly, more or less. Um, what, what, uh, let, let, some other stuff. I liked, um, I actually liked the, um, the stuff with Peter and, he, like, even though I, I'm not a big fan of the, the robot parents, I actually liked the whole dynamic between Peter trying to decide, like, whose ideals he should follow Aunt May's and Uncle Ben's or his dad's, who's like, no, like, th there are sick people in this world and they need to be eliminated. Because you brought that up, because, like... Damn, the, is Richard Parker actually the Sin Eater? That would have been hilarious. That would have been fucking hilarious. But, um... <laughs> but a plot twist out of fucking nowhere. Because, like... I actually like that, like... More or less, like... Peter's dad has, like, a Vietnam flashback. Yeah, basically. Meanwhile, like, Aunt May's like, No, I, I know that there's some bad people in the world, but your Uncle Ben, you know... He believed in that they, there are such things as good people. I, I, I actually am kind of glad that Aunt May was still alive for this, and at least it helps because, like, Peter is so lost in this story, and, like, everyone is telling him, aside from, like, Captain America, Firestar, kind of Cloak and Dagger at one point before Cloak... Black Cat, kind of. Black Cat, kind of. Point. I don't know, like, my... But you, you actually kind of explained that you actually didn't mind Black Cat siding with Venom in this. I, I had a little issue with it just because, like, at the, like, this is the, story, the same story where, like, like, the same Venom who broke her nose and almost beat her to death. Which, which is why I don't really buy her signing with him so easily, but... I think you actually said you explained it a little bit better. Or, like, that you could... I mean, I could kind of see what they were going with. Um, I didn't write it down, so I think I might have, might have lost that in my train of thought. But... Uh, but fair. Um, but yeah, I just, I, it kind of makes sense to me because even then you can kind of see how conflicted she is throughout yeah. the story. Like she kind of bounces back and forth. Yeah. And then like, lot. and then like she sprains her ankle and like, she's out of the fight for like, I think three or four issues. I can't even remember. Yeah, she's up. <clears throat> she shows up at the end. Yeah. Um, it was nice seeing Cloak and Dagger just cause like. I know a lot of people take issue with Cloak and Dagger because, like, they were kind of Spider-Man villains, but, like, I, I like the like their dynamic. Um, they're interesting characters, even though, like, they, they can be kind of over the top. But, like, I, I like Cloak and Dagger, and I like the concept between the two of them. Like, Cloak with his with his Shadow Cloak and Dagger's light, light abilities are at least an interesting dichotomy. So much so they got a Netflix TV show. Yeah. Which I don't think only lasted, like, a season, but... It's not on Blue right now. Like, I think that... I, more of the problem with that is just because of the fact, like, nobody knows Cloak and Dagger. Like, I, I didn't understand why they got a TV show when they could have just had, like, an episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on them. Yeah. Like, they're not exactly characters I'm like, oh, yeah, I want a whole TV show on Cloak and Dagger. Um, 
I, I will admit, I actually like that they, even though I know, like, I think the writers had problems with how hard they went in with just how much murdering Carnage does. Yeah. I at least like that they give you a feeling of the scale. Like, like the, the after they fight... So he's kind of, like, just cutting through town, basically. Yeah, like, I love the, the newscast where he talks about how, like, there's just bodies littering, like, Central Park after Carnage, like, ripped through there. Um, it really, it really makes sense why Peter would keep going back, even though he's he's got broken ribs the entire story. Yeah, because um, I think Carnage gets him once with like he like he slams him into a building or something like that, and it, it, he cracks like a couple ribs. And like Mary Jane's like, all right, well you, you, you're back. Let's let's you know you can get a, a good night's sleep. You can go back out and hunt him tomorrow. He's like, MJ, I don't think you understand. I I have to go back out there because I'm the only one that can stop him. <laughs> Which. Well, well, we'll get into they, some of the because yeah, that's more of a problem I have with the that, story. I because I have a couple complaints. Yeah, about how they do Mary Jane in this story. Yeah, because this is also around the time they were trying to get them broken up. So she starts smoking. Well, actually, she starts smoking like I think the, the the story before this. Yeah, I forget what story it was, but basically, they were like, "Well, she's smoking, so obviously she's not good for kids. You have to stop." Peter has to divorce her because she's she's dancing with men and smoking. I'm like, really? Really? Oh, no, I remember when she started smoking. Is this smoking. the goddamn she, 1920s? She started smoking around the time uh, uh, Harry was going over the edge because she was smoking during that. Which is weird because I, I thought at the end of that story, Peter's like, will you quit smoking the cigarettes? He, he does that at the beginning of this, too. No. I just came from a funeral. Don't make me attend yours. No. Which I'm like, ouch, Peter. But, um... Yeah, they're, like, I, I like, I like that, um, I like the fact that, like, Peter at least tries to go to the Fantastic Four to try and get help. I don't know why he doesn't go to the Avengers Mansion, but I at least like that he goes well, to the they're Fantastic Four. they're not home either, remember? Well, yeah, but, like, he could have at least talked Ca to Jarvis. Caps home. Well, he could have at least been, like, oh, knocked on the door. I'm sure Jarvis would have answered and been like, well, if you want, I can get you a Quinjet. Because <laughs> I'm sure Jarvis would have been like, because Jarvis is a bro. Jarvis would have been like, very well, I will, uh, I will assist you. He'll come out with like a machine gun and be like, let's blow them back to hell, good sir. Basically. Basically. But, um, like, I at least like that he attempts to try and get help because he's like, I need a sonic gun. Granted, he just steals the sonic gun, but I'm like, yeah. I'm like. Well, and then they, they tried getting fire because they were going to get the yeah. torch, and then, but it's like the torch is available, so they go and get Firestar. But no, Firestar just shows up. No, Dagger, go, I mean, uh, Cloak goes to get Firestar. Oh, does she? I, I thought she just showed up. That, no, Clo uh, Clo to Cloak, goes to, get, Cloak <laughs> goes to, to, get, to get her because she's at the Warriors HQ. That, because the new Warriors were a, were a thing and they were a part of the Spider title, so we had to shove the new Warriors into Spider-Man. Yeah, for some reason, like, during the 90s, Basically, Marvel had five editorial teams, and each one had, like, a different, like... Like, there was an Avengers editorial editor, an X-Men editor, and a, a Spider-Man. The Spider-Man editor is the one I know. The, basically, they didn't know what to do with the new event, with the new Warriors. The wasn't that DeFalco at one point? Yeah, DeFalco was actually, I think, the editor of the Spider title, actually, at that point. Um, but basically, they just shoved the new Warriors into Spider-Man... So they would constantly put them in, like, Spider-Man stories, even if it made no fucking sense. Yeah, like, here it at least makes fucking sense. Yeah, because at least Firestar, like, is capable. And, like, my only complaint is I kind of wish Bobby would have showed up, Iceman, so we could have actually done the Spider-Man His Amazing Friends team up. Yeah. Because I don't think that team has actually ever met each other in canon in the, in the 616 universe. I don't think so either. I know Maybe. there's a tie-in for Amazing Friends, but I'm pretty sure it's his own separate universe. It is. Um, but, like, it's, it's such a shame that, like... Because, like, I feel like Marvel's kind of ashamed of that show. And I'm like... I, I, I so kind of get so it. when they announced, like, this year they're going to do a Firestar Marvel yeah. Legend. I was like, holy fuck, I gotta buy that. Because, like, I certainly wouldn't mind them doing just a story where, like, Spider-Man, Iceman, and, like, Firestar, like, were teamed up. Even maybe, like, hit the, like, that, that team existed at one point in the Marvel Universe... For, like, a story that no one knows because, like, they're, even they're, like, embarrassed about it or something like that. Like, it could have been, like, a fun, zany story, but, like, they never do anything with it. And it's such a shame. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. 
Maxim Card is the closest you get to a Spider-Man is Amazing Friends reference. This is such the great story for that. Yeah, really. Spider-Man and his amazing, oh God, the death toll is horrific. That's something you won't ever see on Jeopardy. Um, but like, I, I, I think that like, um, there are some, at least uh, of the cameos, I actually like that they got Cap. Because honestly, Cap, like, Cap makes so much sense for this book. Yeah. Because, like, if there's anyone that, like, is going to get through to Peter that you're doing the right thing, it's Captain America. Yeah, which here, here I was looking for that, yeah, no, that I, shot. Like, this right here, I think, where most people are like, oh, thank God yeah. <laughs> Cap is here. You know, let's, just, let's just read this real quick. The aura of evil, of insanity in the air is so thick that Spider-Man can feel it. It's settled over him like a layer of soot. The more he tries to sweep it away, the more it soot, the soot swirls around him. So thick he can hardly see, barely breathe. He feels poisoned by it, corrupted. Yet deep in his heart is a belief, almost a prayer, that there has to be another way, a better way than this. And he feels that if only he could stop, catch his breath, see clearly for even a moment. How about a hand, son? The way would make itself known. You look like you could use one. Like, I, I love Cap because, like, if there's any Avenger that... Spider-Man needs right now. It's, Cap. it's Captain America. Um, and especially because I love that Cap is just like, no, we're, like, we're not killing Carnage. We're not... And I, and I know some people will try to be like, well, Captain America's killing him. I'm like, that's different. Captain America it was Nazis a... Nazis aren't fucking people. We've well, been too. over this. That too. But, like, war is different. Than, like, like, war, death is sadly a thing that's going to have to happen. <laughs> but, like... Like, like, cause Cap doesn't go into like, like a crack house and just start blowing gangbangers away with a machine gun. Yeah, that's that's Punisher territory. Like, Cap doesn't do that. Um, Firestar even mentions that at one point. Yeah, like, oh, like the, we should get the Punisher. I, I think that was what she was talking about. Which I'm like, yeah, cause that's what we need is the psychopath that is shoot first questions, ask questions later. But. Uh, that and like I actually will give credit. I actually like a lot of the times where where Venom actually has the upper hand against Carnage, like it kind of implying that like the Venom symbiote is stronger than the Carnage symbiote, but like Carnage just has the upper hand because he's crazy. Let's just talk about it. like I love the dialogue between Venom and Carnage in this. So oh, yeah, no more playing by the spider's rules. No more weakling partners getting in our way of vengeance. From this moment on, it's down to Venom and. Looking for me, Daddy Dearest? Carnage. Pop, the little woman and I have been talking it over, and we've decided you're just too much of a burden on the family. With sending the kids to private school and the mortals' mortgage and all that, we just can't afford you anymore. In other words, old man, it's time to die. <laughs> and I'm gonna let the wife take the first crack at you. A little humiliation before we finish you off. Only humiliation I've seen here today was you begging and crying like the be bed wedding in video <laughs> art. I'm like, oh no, because like Venom just has no no need. He has for no carnage. fucking chill at no. all with fucking Carnage. Well, I couldn't really do a Carnage voice. I kind of slipped into a Joker voice. I couldn't get my voice to go that high pitched. Well, his voice is hard to do, but like he's just. I also love that they imply that like the Venom symbiote makes him make, makes like Eddie a pair of tidy whiteies. Like, like, because like. Every time Carnage loses his symbiote, he's buck ass naked. Yeah. But he's like, the Venom symbiote's like, oh, I'm dying, but first, I have to cover Brock's shame. Ugh, Jesus. You don't understand, Spider Man. The taint. The taint. But, um. But yeah, I, I think there's a lot of fun in this story. Like, there's actually some decent humor, like, um, when Iron Fist manages to calm the crowd with his, with his powers. And Spider Man's like, if you could teach us all to do that, we'd, we'd beat Carnage no problem. Well, sure thing, Spider-Man. It'll only take you eight or ten years. And so Spider-Man just so fed up with everything, just smashes a chimney with his bare hands. Here's that part you were talking about. Oh, the part with fucking Night Thrasher? Yeah, so... Night Watch, you mean Night Watch. Night Watch, Night Thrasher. What the fuck ever his it's name is. It's just Spawn. It's just it's Spawn. fucking Spawn. No, like, so Spawn was kicking like Marvel's ass at this point. So Marvel, in their infinite wisdom, was like, well, if McFarlane can do Spawn, we can do Spawn, too. So they made this loser. I couldn't help but notice, your, your edition is, like, a little blurrier than mine is. Uh, to be fair, this was from, like, 2005. Like, 
five or six, so, so fair. Mine, mine might be in there printing, but yeah. here's some of the good humor. So you got, you got a couple of criminals, like, holding some cops cost, yeah. hostage, right? And so Peter sneaks into the vents and, oh, yeah, and like, surprises like, them, and he's just like, boys probably found another, another stray desk sergeant hiding under another desk. But it sounds like, like the action's over? What the fuck? Yeah, wait, wait. <laughs> Get back inside the cell block and grab the hostages before it. Spider-Man? Before Spider-Man Spider what, what, Hank? Before Spider-Man sneaks in through the ventilation system, cuts you off from helpless victims with a wall of webbing? Too late. <laughs> or before Spider-Man finishes, finishes what he started down the hall? Too, Too lame. lame. <laughs> Too lame. I hate being left out of the conversation. <laughs> it's just plain rude. <laughs> no, I... Because, like, I love it. Like, Spider-Man's, like, just... Like, is he just, just fucking quipping? What like that? They're, they're like these thugs. Like, they're, they're not anything Spider-Man's not handled before. Also, like, look at, like, Morbius next to that shot of Carrion. Could you tell who the fuck those two are if you've no. never read a story before? No. Like, I guess Morbius looks like such a fucking joke. Oh, this, this fucking picture with fucking Deathlock. Like, th this team of good guys. I will say, they had good covers. No, that cover is really good with the Venom, like, puppeting, or uh, being puppeted by, uh... Like, there's some really great shots, like, where, um... <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> I think that's the Fantastic Car. They stole the Fantastic Car, too! <laughs> <laughs> Reed's gonna come back and be like, what the fuck what happened to my house? house? <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, 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 Sue's like, this wouldn't happen if you noticed my outfit more, Reed. Damn it, woman, I don't have time for you in your midlife crisis! Jesus Christ. They can read sound like a dickhead. <laughs> I mean... I mean, he is at that point. <laughs> Meanwhile, poor Mary Jane has to deal with with Peter's family. Um, to be fair, I think that that actually is an Avengers vehicle that, like, Cap is riding. Which is weird, because, like, I think at this point, Cap had, like, a like a motorcycle that could fly. Oh, this one guy, this guy's, like, this homeless guy's, like, hit these windows, like, looking in a mirror, show me what a failure I am. I'll break them all. Sees Cap. Uh, I am I'm sorry. sorry. I'm like, damn. <laughs> Cap, Cap didn't even say shit. He just yeah, no. Cap silently just, shames him like, Cap just oh. looks like a disappointed dad. Like, so. You're in detention. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, because, like, there's some really great stuff here. And, like, 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 because I like when they show, like, the pe like the people being affected by, like, by Shriek and, like, just the insanity around them. And, like, it, it really shows just how much, like... Here's that part I was... I, I hate to interrupt, but no here's, that, here's that part about Black Cat I was telling you about. Um, sure wish I could help Spider and the others. As Black Cat, maybe. My, my arm's torn up, vision's still blurry from the beating I took. I don't want to get myself killed. And I'm starting to learn things about myself, myself that I never suspected. Peter would give his life for what he believes in, but... I don't know if I could. Which, to be fair, I... I think it's actually kind of an interesting, like, character... Also, I love... I love here where they imply that, like... She wears a wig, despite the fact that her hair is the same color as her wig. Yeah, really. Um, but like I also this, this part. Hey, you mess with one of us. You mess, mess with, with all, all of us. us. <laughs> Which I'm like, oh, you people are gonna get murdered. Like at least, at least with the the goblin, I get that. But like with all these psychopaths, you're you're just gonna die. Here's a great. Here's a shot of him in the M16. Oh yeah. <laughs> Which I'm like, where did you fucking get that? At? I'm assuming he took that off somebody. Yeah. But like... <laughs> oh, th this is one of my favorite parts, is when fucking Mary Jane lays the fucking smack down on, on, her, fa on her father in law Oh, this is fucking great. Let me, let me read this. I can't take this anymore. Look at us, huddled here like frightened sheep in Liz's apartment, hiding away while those devils run loose. I feel like I'm in prison again. Richard, darling, please don't. Don't what, Mary? Don't speak the truth? Sorry, I didn't mean to speak. <laughs> okay. I'm getting a character here. <laughs> A world that made some kind of... I'm sorry. While we were locked away in that Soviet hellhole, one of the few things that gave me hope, kept me which, sane... Which was really dates the story. Yeah, was thinking about my life back home, which is like that, that Chevy Caprice in that one I was telling you about yeah. earlier from uh, Death of John the Wolf. Yeah. Uh, a world that made some kind of sense, moral, orderly, but now I see what a fool I was. That world I remembered was just an illusion. The evil was here all along, festering beneath the surface. And it's finally burst through to shut... Up. Huh? Father in law or not, I am sick to death of listening to you. Yeah. I love there that. are decent people out there putting their lives on the line. They need our good thoughts, our prayers, not your negativity and cynicism. 
Now, Mary Jane, I know you're upset. Upset? You saw what happened a few minutes ago. They made a difference. Without even lifting a finger, Spider-Man and the others touched these people, reached into these, their hearts, and gave hope. I love here because there's there's a shot of just Mary Jane or it, Mary, it, of all Mary Jane. Like, like, damn right. <laughs> this is why. Which, I, this is if, why if I, he's doing this while holding a cigarette with the other hand. Like, nah. Meanwhile, Mary, oh, Mary's just like, this is why I ship it. This, but that's just me. The violence would have ended right then and there if it wasn't for what Shriek did. But the heroes were, will still win this thing. You wait and see. Whatever psychic hold Shriek has on these people, Spider-Man will stop her. So I don't want to hear another negative word out of you, Richard. You hear me? But not another word. I'm like, Mary Jane, I'm not putting up with any of this bullshit. Because <laughs> no. I, I think at this point, like, Mary Jane's kind of having her character. Because, like, her character thing is, like, she just doesn't want to watch Peter die because, like, this is shortly after Harry had died, had passed away. Yeah. And she just didn't want to lose him. And, like, and Peter, honest to God, feels really bad about it. Because, like, like, have this story. He just, I want to go home to Mary Jane. I want to try and fix my marriage. But Carter is still out there. Like, no, there, there is some really great dialogue in this. Because, like, I, I think there... Oh, and here's one of my favorite parts where somehow the, the Venom symbiote put a piece of itself in the sonic gun that... Carnage stole off Spider-Man and literally, like, breaks the gun. It, 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 it kind of doesn't make sense if you really think about it, because, like, by all rights, the Sonic gun should have destroyed that piece of the Venom symbiote, but... Wait, let, me, let me read this. Maybe I can get my voice high-pitched for this. I'm sure the people at home listen to this are like, God, they listen to these two read the dialogue. Yeah. Well, we, probably after this, we'll get into the... the remember the hype of those Maximum Carnage, the audio book. <laughs> Probably after this, we'll... Just you and me yeah, reading dialogue. Reading dialogue. Uh, probably after this, though, we'll, we'll get into, like, our problems with the story. Ah, yeah. look at him. He's really terrified. Poor guy. Maybe he's had enough. Maybe I shouldn't use the gun on him. And if you believe that, there's a bridge in Brooklyn I'd like to sell to you. Again, I'm still using my, my joke. But I can't do that high-pitched card. Well, it's voice. hard to do, because, like, it... it... <clears throat> Cause unless you're, like... Bang! Bang, idiot! Dead? Wait a minute. What's going on? What's going on, you pitiful fool? Venom <laughs> is free! To be fair, that, that's a nice looking Venom. <laughs> no, it's not possible. I had you beaten. You were begging me to. No, excuse me. I was winning! <laughs> like, no, like Carnage. Fucking flips the yeah, fuck like, out. Like Carnage, like, like cause, especially because he had Venom dead to rights. By all accounts. What does he do? He starts monologuing. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's starts let's, fucking monologuing let's, uh, again. We, we've got like, like, so like probably the biggest complaint I have with the story is this story is fourteen parts. It actually it starts in the first issue of Spider Man Unlimited, which for those of you who don't know that was actually a monthly annual. I know that that doesn't make a lot of sense, but basically. Uh, Unlimited was more or less just a title they had to, like, Marvel tie up one, stories. Marvel wanted another Spider-Man title. There you go. Yeah, more or less. Which is weird, because at this point they had Amazing Spider-Man. Web. Web. Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man. Just Adjectiveless Spider-Man. Adjectiveless Spider-Man, Spider which kind of felt like, it fell, fell into the web, web of Spider-Man's territory, where it, it started off having a purpose, but it basically became just another, like, place you can do extra parts. And then finally they had Spider-Man Unlimited, which... Like I said, it was a monthly title that more or less was just there to be the beginning and ends of stories. I want to say it was also the same way for... Uh, no, I take that back. I was going to say Maximum Clonage, but Maximum Clonage did the whole Age of Apocalypse Alpha and Omega thing. Well, and the, the scene where Peter gets rid of the symbiote <laughs> suit is also in Web. Yeah. So well, That's in Web. So Web kind of was the same deal. Yeah, but then Web just kind of became like a random thir third Spider-Man title. Um... But basically, it goes from the first unlimited of a month, and it ends on the unlimited, if I remember correctly. Yeah. It but does. basically, it, it it's sixteen or er, sixteen. It's fourteen issues. I think it's like two each for Amazing Web Spectacular. It might be more. I I just can't remember. It was like I've read this story, but it's it's been a long time since I've been like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna read this cover to cover. Which again, I did the day, and you were like, yeah. damn. I no, I I, I give you credit, credit because like. Even when I read it, like, I, I maybe read, like, two or three issues, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to take a break. Like, shit, I was almost late to work because I yeah. was like, I want to finish this thing. I got, like, six pages left. I got to finish it. It was like, it's not a bad story. It's just, it's so bloated because, like, 
I think I think you would you would agree with that. No, it's I, I, really def bloated. I definitely agree. It kind of <clears> has the same issue I feel like a lot of '90s Spidey stories have, which is just yeah. way too much bloat. Which is <laughs> hilarious, as we we say as we defend the Clone Saga all the time. No, I'll defend the Clone Saga because the Clone Saga is good, but I'm not blind enough to say the, the Clone Saga doesn't have a shit ton. Of well, blood. no, you're no. It, that's I'm at least I'm at least honest with my love of Clone no, Saga. Yeah, I'm honest. Yeah, about no, it. you're you are at least honest. Because I know people that. But, like, and part of the problem is they keep bringing in, like, guest appearances. Like, probably the one that I... With Deflock, I remember... Oh, I remember, my God. Do you want to know my exact response to seeing Deflock in this? Yeah. You, you've seen Coming to America, right? Do you remember yeah. the scene where Samuel Jackson's robbing a store? Oh, yeah. Who the fuck is this asshole? Yeah, <laughs> like, no, like, that's... <laughs> that's what I was doing. Because, like, who the fuck is this? This was the first story that ever introduced me to Deathlock. I had no clue who he was. Same, right? I was like, who the fuck is this? Um, for those of you who don't know Deathlock, which he showed up in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., basically Deathlock are these group of cyborg zombies that the government created to be, like, cybernetic warriors. And the I think the one in the, the, the story, the, the one that everyone knows is Deathlock 9. Basically, he... <clears throat> so, like, Deep Space 9. Kind of. Um... Basically, he he was he was gonna be used by like one of the bad guy like the bad guy and but like he rebelled and he basically became like this soldier of fortune that fights for justice. Except he does nothing in the story. I think almost every time he's it's in his the story, fucking ass beat the first time he shows off. Which if you're someone who's like reading the spider tale, does that make you interested in wanting to read? No, I was, like, I, was, I was like, what the fuck is this? And why is he here if he's just gonna get his ass? And beat? Iron Fist shows up. I'm like, Jesus, can we stop bringing in guest stars? Yeah, I, especially frustrating with Iron Fist because I'm like, at this point, I think he didn't even have like his own solo title because it was just him and Power Man, like Heroes for Hire. Um. Spider Maximum Carnage, the awesome conclusion. Thanks for not telling me what part this is if I wanted to go back and buy all the rest of them. Dick. <laughs> but, um... <clears throat> like, there's that. Like, the part with Night Thrasher or whatever the fuck his name is. Night Watch. I know I'm getting his name wrong. Spawn. I'm not even doing it on purpose. It's it's a, spawn. It's spawn. He... Because, like, literally, he's just... The first thing we see of him is he's sitting on a, oh, on a building. Before even Deathlock, okay, the Deathlock thing, I was like, who the fuck is this asshole, right? Yeah. Then fucking Morbius shows up. Oh, like, my, oh my god. Oh my god, no. Like, Not Morbius. No. Put him back. Because I, I fucking he's, hate... He's half this being fucking useless. Yeah, no, he's like, just... I love the one where, like, they have everybody, like, all geared up, ready to do another battle with Carnage and his, and his, and his, and his, his allies, right? Yeah. And then they cut to Morbius asleep, and they're like, Morbius can't do anything because it's daytime. I'm like... Then you why know. the fuck would you put him in here? Which doesn't even make sense to me because Morbius isn't like a regular vampire. Yeah, I was like, what the f I, I was like, I could have done without Morbius being in this. No, really. I really could have fucking done without Morbius. Agreed. Just yeah. don't care. Really don't fucking care. You I'm gonna suck. go see the movie, but I pretty much don't give a shit. Bad enough I'm, going in, I'm going into that with such low expectations. <laughs> Even if it's an average movie, well, because, I'm gonna feel like I, I I didn't waste money. Especially because Morbius is played by Jared fucking Leto. Which I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah, the last superhero movie I saw him in, he was fucking great. Oh yeah, because that was Birds of Prey and they only showed him for like a two second thing behind his back. Yeah, he, he's <laughs> he's a piece of shit. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not I'm not gonna kill you. I'm just gonna hurt you real bad. Was he talking to <clears throat> Warner Brothers and their fucking back box office? <laughs> Because if he did, because if he did, he did a bang up fucking job. Damn, he fucking he actually obliterated him. But um, yeah, like there's that. But like, I love Night Night Watch because he literally his first appearance is just sitting on a gargoyle like he's fucking Batman getting ready to like patrol. And I'm like, did I did I skip over pages? Oh, that's cool. Sorry, Jared texted me. Apparently he found uh, his animated series Sneak Peek. Oh, cool. But, like, you, you, remember, you remember when he shows up, right? Like, literally it felt like you were reading a, the, the, re, reading a story. And then all of a sudden it felt like we were in an entirely different story. No, it really did. Like, I, like it felt like I had, like, skipped pages. And I was like, what the fuck is this? But, um... 
who the fuck is this asshole? <laughs> Seems but, to uh, be the trend with, with any of these fucking guest appearances. Like, I, who the fuck is which this? Which is weird, because I knew who Firestar was when I read this. I knew who Firestar was, obviously. I like Firestar. Well, no, like, but, like, this was back when I, like, like, I know, I know you know, but, like, because, but, like, when I was reading this when I was a teenager, I knew who she was, because, like, I had watched a couple episodes of Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, thanks to Disney acquiring the, like, showing, like, every, like, animated series Spider-Man was ever fucking in. Except for um, Spectacular. Well, Spectacular, because well, that didn't exist in the MTV show. Because, well, that's not really... Well, that and New Adventures, because I don't think New Adventures... I don't know. There is some weird legal shit Oh, you mean the, um, the, 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 MT, the MTV one. Oh, the MTV. Okay. I don't think that's on Disney+. Plus. Because I think there's some... Because I think Sony owns that. Yeah. Well, then, I don't think they showed Spider-Man 5000, which... For those of you who don't know, that's, no, that's actually... On there. Oh, they, they did show them Spider-Man 5000? That's on there. Okay. For those of you who don't know what I mean, the when I say... Ones, the only ones not on there are 67... Um, well, no, I was talking um, about when they when the first movie came out. They actually marathon like all these. different... Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about what's. No, no, on I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. talking about, about on what's di what's on Disney Plus. No, I'm, sorry, oh, I wasn't okay. talking about what's on Disney Plus. But sorry. Um, well, that's okay. I, I didn't make a. But um. Well, now you know. When I, but um, what I mean by five thousand. Before they made Spider Man is Amazing Friends, they made a one seat. Well, I should say seat. It was more like I think a thirteen episode. Basically, they, they before they they did Spider Man is Amazing Friends. They did an 80 Spider-Man TV show. It only lasted a season because it was Garbo. I it, have the coloring book from that. Yeah, I actually have a couple of those on VHS because I found them at a Goodwill. But, um... Basically... But like, I know who Firestar was, which is hilarious because anyone who read the story back in the 90s probably didn't know who the hell she was. Yeah. Like... I, because I find it so weird that that was where they, they started integrating her, was young, New Warriors. I'm like, yeah. congrats, guys. It only took you 20 years. But... You know, I could have I not cared any more that they brought in Demo Goblin and Carrion. Oh my God, when Demo Goblin showed up, I'm like, oh, great, this fucking loser. We just talked about him the other day. And then yeah. I saw Carrion, and I'm like, again, I'm like... Who the fuck is this? No, like he comes out of the sewer. I'm like, who the fuck is this? Yeah, I know. Like, I'm like, I'm like I should have, I should have texted, kept texting you. Like, who the fuck is this? Oh, and then yeah. like later on, what the fuck is this? Who? Yeah. What like, the shit am I looking at? Just <laughs> like, Demo Goblin makes no fucking sense why it joins up with with Carnage. Because like Demo Goblin's whole thing is he kills sinners. Who's a bigger sinner than Carnage? Yeah, really. Especially because, like, they make they make him so lame. Like, Devil Goblin has, like, the most powers in the group. And he just... He doesn't do anything. I think the worst thing he does is he, like... Throws, like, this weird pumpkin bomb at Spider-Man, which is, like, a oh, shadow you, bomb. Yeah, which is, like, yeah he, tries to send, he tries to send Peter to the Shadow Realm. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like get the fuck out of here. I think he gets saved by a cloak. Yeah, he gets saved by... His cloak no, he gets saved by cloak Dagger. And, cloak and Dagger save him. Yeah, like, Dagger... Well, because I think Dagger uses her light powers to cancel out the Shadow Ball or whatever the fuck it was. Well, no, 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 no. What happens, what happens actually at first is that, you know, Demo Goblin's got him by the throat and this fucking priest comes rolling up. Oh, now, yeah. Fucking Father McKay over here with the, with the cross. To which Peter's like, no, I gotta save this priest because yeah. let's be honest, he's gonna get fucking murdered otherwise. Yeah. And then Cloak, yeah, I remember. Like, like I said, it's been, like, I know this story pretty well. But there's some beats in it I just don't fucking remember because, like, there's so much just... Dumb and then shit. this happens, and then we completely drop it all together. Um, but no, especially because this isn't even, like, the good carry-in. It's, like, the third carry-in. The only good thing he does in this is name drop my boy Miles Warren. <laughs> yeah, which is hilarious because later on in the, in the, the Clone Saga... The Jackal creates, like, a carrion bomb that he uses, like, with the carrion virus that's in Carrion's body. So he can, like, kill all of New York and then replace them with clones. Or whatever the fuck my plot is this month. But hey, enough about that. Here's more Spider-Side. <laughs> oh, um, don't, don't bring him up. I don't know. You fucking bring that shit up in my house. <laughs> uh, what was your feeling on the happy gun? <laughs> Since Listen, I, the, I wanted to be mad, but at the same time, I'm like, damn, this this is the most 90s looking yo. thing I have ever fucking so, seen. So you know what? I'm going to allow it. So basically, one of the bigger factors in this is that Shriek has like this, 
emits this, like, psychic energy that, like, makes you, like, just be an asshole. <laughs> so, Cap comes up with this idea to get something from Avengers Mansion called the Alpha... The Alpha... Something or fucking gun. ever. Gun of the week. Basically, <laughs> the week. as Linkara called it, it's a gun that shoots good vibes, basically. It's a happy gun. It literally shoots energy that, like, makes you happy. And it, like, frees everyone of Shriek's, like, mental powers. But, like, and not, but then, like, and then, like, Shriek somehow manages to overpower the gun. And it's around this time that fucking Dagger comes back. And Dagger's like, I'm about to end this whole girl's career. I have something to show you when we don't film But, it. like, but, like, I, I don't necessarily hate the gun. But, I like, I know a lot of people are like, well, that's such a deus ex machina that they just pull this out of their ass. I'm like, the is it? Is on your cell phone. It, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a figure with that stupid looking thing. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the spot um, portal emitter from the animated series, that weird looking like gun thing. Only like bigger. It like yeah. needed a tripod. I, I remember that. I remember that. Like, I'm not saying it's necessarily bad because I don't really mind the happy gun. It's just... I don't know where the fuck else they would have they would have went with this at yeah. this point. They'd already blown this shit up like, so bad. If it were me, I would have I would have just had it that that's where Sh uh, Dagger comes in and like her light powers somehow negate Shriek's abilities. Yeah. But like, and, and to be fair, Dagger dying was such it. a dumbass thing. I got it. We're gonna bring in Scarlet Witch. Oh yeah, <laughs> because that works out so well. <laughs> No more sadness. Well, this this is before she uh, was suddenly remembered that. Oh yeah, she had kids at one point. But um, it, like, and Tanker's death is so bullshit. Literally, she explodes into light particles, and some of them get stuck inside Cloak's cloak. Like she's fucking Dazzler or something. Yeah, I don't even think Dazzler can do that. And Dazzler's even more bullshit than Dagger. Oh, man. That's what they should have done. What, bring Dazzler into this? Yeah, she could have She could have sang a song. And she could have used her Dazzle powers to free everyone from their Fucking singing. Fucking starts playing. <laughs> Listen up, you fools! Don't you know the Carnage rules? I would have fucking paid money for that. I, you're not wrong. Um... But yeah, like, and then, and then of course, the best part of the story is when, is when the Avengers at the very end show up to pick Carnage up. I honestly, to God, wish Spider-Man would have been like, yeah, where the fuck were you? D did you not see the news? My, my other favorite part is Black Cat's like, these Avengers don't look tough. I bet I could get in if I tried. I'm like, you probably could have, Cat. Especially because these Avengers sucked. Which we'll get into when we finally review The Crossing. Oh, God. Because, holy what shit. Why the fuck you, remi you might remind me that I have that? Because it's my book! I don't know. <laughs> that review is going to start me looking at you. <laughs> Why the fuck you made me read this? Because <laughs> I told you to, and I want... If I have to fucking suffer, so do you! What the fuck you mean? <laughs> no, fuck you, I'm out. Fucking gets out of the car. Oh, Oh, big whoop, Colton gets out of the car so Adam has to spend 20 fucking minutes talking about Guyver the Dark Hero <laughs> because you're fucking Jason <laughs> Tina said sauce on him. What's the motherfucker? I ain't about that sauce unless I'm on Reddit. Maybe we'll go to Long John Silver's and I have to drive over the fucking... Will you fucking stop at the Long John's? <laughs> Nobody so here is going to know what that's a fucking reference I know, to. It's, it's hilarious to me. I'm going to get... <laughs> It's gonna be 100 subs, Colton and Adam explain the fucking Lon John Silver story. Oh, uh, uh, you know what, yeah. If you guys get us 100 we'll, subs... We'll commission Lee to draw it, too. It'll be animated. <laughs> it's just gonna be us. It's gonna be animated us just sitting on this fucking bench with a few shots of, like, <laughs> the yeah. story. God damn it, I would pay uh, money for that. That'd be funny but, as um, fuck. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I love at the end, because, like... Um, they, they bring up the fact that, like, Carnage wanted to find, like, the grave of his mother. Because, like, basically it ends, um, at the, uh, the orphanage Carnage used to live in. Uh, after he supposedly killed his mother. Oh, he killed, I, he killed his father for wait. killing his mother for trying to, for, for trying yeah, to kill right. him. Sorry, like, I, Carnage... Yeah, direct quote. <laughs> yeah. 
And basically, Carnage wanted the casket, like, which they find out is empty. <clears throat> and, like, Peter even says, like, you know, with Carnage, it's hard to know what's logical and what's not with him. But I love at the end there where, like, she's like, do you think, like, Carnage will really be put away for good? And Peter's like, oh, pretty lady. Like, the, every once in a while, the ghosts do stay dead and they don't come back and haunt you. And then she has Harry and Norman's tombstones. Yeah, like, oh. which I'm like, which is hilarious in hindsight because now both of them are alive again. Well, okay, okay Harry. Clone Saga alive. happens. Fooled you. <laughs> yeah, well, that and like shortly after this, the fucking robot parents storyline finally reaches its conclusion. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. But like, 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 like then like, I. I always find it weird they did this thing with Mary Jane during this where, like, wherever Peter is, like, not home, she goes out dancing. I don't know why they did that. Like, either. I think that was just yet another reason for them to try and break their marriage up. Like, oh, she's out dancing with other men. Which I'm like, this isn't the fucking 20s. Holy fuck. <laughs> like, Peter isn't really exactly... It's not like she's fucking him on the dance floor. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Like, she... It's just like, these, these, these clubs are, like, lame. <laughs> They're like discotheques. Yeah. Who the fuck goes to discotheques in 1992? Like, oh, yeah, really. Um, but yeah, like, there's a lot of really dumb shit in this. But like, as a whole, I don't think the story is necessarily bad. I, I, I definitely think it's good. And I enjoyed a lot of... I mean, I wouldn't have wrote a damn meta about it no, if I didn't I, like it. it. It's just, there, there are some parts of it where I'm like, man, this could have been trimmed a little bit. Yeah. You know, kind of like fine, fine tune it a little bit. Yeah. Like, for me, I, I think it should have only been like six issues. Um, I also would have cut down like all the, the, the like superfluous heroes. Like, Iron Fist could go. Death Morbius Lock. and Deadlock could fuck off. Night... Nightwatch, Nightwatch, Thrasher, Spawn, fuck? whoever the fuck you are, just didn't need to fucking exist. Didn't need to see you. Can I, can I just have a side about that character, like how lame he is? Okay, he's a college professor who was banging like a, a former student of his. Mm -hmm. And she's getting on a plane. Well, basically, all of a sudden himself in the future shows up with the costume because terrorists are going to attack the plane. Oh my fucking god. So he puts the costume on, but like... He wasn't able to control it because, like, the, the costume is alive. Well, because it, because it's, and it, he accidentally, like, trying to stop the terrorists from blowing up this plane causes the plane to crash and it kills the woman. So he, he's like, I don't know if my future self was evil or if I'm, like, possessed by the suit. So I'm going to live on an island by myself, but I just can't help myself. I've got to fight crime. Because, like, do you wonder when he actually showed up? He showed up in issue the, the same issue as the spider armor in Web of Spider Man. Mm -hmm. Because Wilson Fisk's buddy Alfredo stole one of his magic gauntlets and called himself Gauntlet. It's. He's so lame, Colton. You have no idea how lame this fucker is. Listen to me. The entire time you're telling me this, you know what the only thing I can think of is? What? I hope we're not going to get flagged. We probably will. For me, for me playing this fucking audio clip. It's <laughs> just a fucking dance. No. Like, no. He's like, he's so fucking lame. Because he's literally just Marvel being like, well, if you can't beat him, join him. I don't think anybody on camera even heard that fucking no, no going off. Um, which I'm like, good, now I don't get flagged. Would you would you recommend this to people? I would. I, I think yeah, it's a I, good story. I, it's enjoyable. Like, I, 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 I think if you like Cindy, it's fuck yeah, yeah read no, this I, shit. I, like, this is good. Especially because it gives so much backstory to Carnage and actually makes him more interesting of a character. Like, I would recommend it to even a casual Spidey reader. Just yeah, with no, a little no. bit like, hey, this, there, there are parts of this where you're going to be like, okay, what's the point? Or even be like, this is fucking weird. Yeah, it, it's going to happen, but it, um, it's still a good story. Yeah. Um, if, if we were to rate this, I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10. Probably it. Maybe a 7.5 if I were really generous. Like, I, I think it's solid. I'm, I'm gonna give it an 8. eight yeah, that's fair. I, I, I'll give it 8 symbiotes out of 10. I'd give it an 8 if it were, like, 6 to 8 issues instead of 14, but... Yeah. As a whole, I don't I don't think it's necessarily bad, and I think it's... If you're a Carnage guy, it's definitely a must-read. Yeah. Especially if you're a Carnage guy. Like, this and the original Carnage story are just... 
Which I think is funny because like, if, for those who don't know, like, I have a Carnage pin I wear on my, my vest at, at I mean, you work. you want to tell the story. Oh yeah, I gotta tell, because you've never heard the story. I yeah, no, think. I don't so, think like, I, have. I I have this big ass Carnage pin, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's I think big. it's actually, I think the art's actually from this. Yeah, like, actually I think it is piece. from this. And I wear it on my, on my shoulder, because like I have that on this shoulder, and then I have a Spider-Man 2 promo pin on this one. Right. Which I used to have another Spidey 2 promo pin, and I have Spider-Man 1 one promo pin, but I don't wear them anymore because I don't want them to get damaged. Like the other one is kind of like a, like a like a bubble yeah. one, so like I don't feel too bad. No. But so like I was helping this lady the one time, and she saw that and she's like, "What the hell is that?" Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's Carnage. He's a Spider-Man villain. No. Which is like, just me me under me simplifying that shit to the absolute brim because I'm like, I don't want to explain the book. Yeah, then I like, had another guy, right, that like, oh yeah, guy came up to me wearing a Venom shirt, and he's like, damn, dude, I love that Carnage yeah. pin you got, and I'm like, oh, hey, thanks. I remember that he, And he starts talking to me about it, he's like, ah, when I was in college, I wrote my thesis on the back, the backstory and the lore of the symbionts, and I'm like, damn, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> that is pretty awesome. I was like, that's pretty damn awesome. Which is funny, because I wrote a, um, which you've read, um, I wrote a story about, like, how women are marginalized in comics for one of my college, uh, courses. Yeah. Um.